we should come to the domestic equity market because I think this man, Wilbur Ross, uh, gained a fame perhaps he hadn't reached it in any other country he'd invested in uh, uh, previously, but obviously his acquisition of shares in uh, Bank of Ireland and the depths of the crisis and then obviously his subsequent uh, sale of those at enormous profit uh, did generate uh, understandably a lot of headlines. But uh, Robbie, in relation to the Irish equity market, is it the canary in the coal mine? Does it tell us that we've run a long way and may not go further? I think it probably does and, and certainly there isn't a, an easy jump from a better outlook for the Irish economy into the Irish equity market and that's the case for a couple of reasons. One is most of the companies quoted on the Irish stock exchange don't do any business in Ireland or do very little business in Ireland so any recovery in Ireland doesn't feed through uh, to what they do. Secondly, a lot of the good news has already been discounted. The, the Isaac bottomed out in 2009 at 1900, recently it was trading at 5200. So a lot of the good news is, is built into the price and I think if, if I interpret what Wil, Wilbur Ross said, uh, I actually would agree with him. If I was him, I would have sold out as well. He nearly trebled his money. And he's not saying that Bank of Ireland is, is expensive, but he's saying it's kind of fairly valued now, so I look elsewhere for, for, for better value. And I think you could actually say that about the market as a whole, uh, excluding financials, it trades on about P, about 17. If you look at the good quality food companies, they're all trading up there at 18, 19, 20 times earnings. CRH is trading in a PE of over 20. So I think a lot has been priced into the Irish equity market. So I think the gains from here will be limited enough. Now we, we have to chat about housing because obviously it has a very direct impact on people here. And indeed your, your children and so on, we hear tales of queues of 40 people outside South Dublin, three and four bedroom homes. And actually the international press and domestic press are now talking about housing bubbles all over again. Uh, again, I've got to get your view on that. Yeah, it's remarkable. We went from boom to bust to go to the States. We'll never buy a house again. And then suddenly, within a matter of a few months, the media's all over a, a, a housing bubble. And as you say, it's not just the domestic media, it's the international media as well. CNBC the other day gave up a large portion of the day talking about the so-called bubble in, in the Irish housing market. Personally, I think it's far too early to be talking about a bubble in the Irish, uh, Irish housing market. A couple of reasons. One is any increase in prices we've seen has been confined to Dublin. There's been virtually no increase in prices outside of Dublin. And even in Dublin, prices are up about 25% from their trough, but they're still about 50% off their, uh, off, off their peak. Secondly, it, what's, been, what's happened in Dublin hasn't been driven by credit. The amount of mortgages outstanding are actually falling quite rapidly. Uh, unlike the previous, previous, previous boom. So it's been driven, driven by cash buyers, and there's only certain, well, it's a certain distance that cash buyers could actually push to market. And thirdly, if you were to look at valuations on housing, there's a couple of metrics you might use. So often the, the, the metric people often use is the ratio of the average house price to the average income. That got up as high as nine in, in, in the boom. It's now back to about four, four and a half. It's where it was in the mid 90s. It's higher than it was in the 70s and 80s, but kind of back in recent territory. Or you could look at rent, uh, rental yields. Now, the, the average rental yields in the Irish residential market at the moment is about 6%. And that looks to me to be pretty good value relative to the sort of returns Adam is talking about, and particularly given that it's coming off uh, a, a rents that's relatively low and are likely to grow quite rapidly going forward. So I think it's very early to be talking about a housing bubble. As this chart shows, really the big issue is all about supply. We built 8,000 houses or thereabouts last year. Only about a thousand of those were built in Dublin. So clearly the supply is completely inadequate to cater for any sort of reasonable demand. Household formation is about 15, 20,000 a year. And I think we're beginning to see some evidence that of activity in, in the housing market again. And I think before long we'll see a significant increase in output in the in the building sector, in, in the housing sector. And that'll be good news for the economy as a whole in the sense that it'll generate activity. But it'll also eventually stabilise, I think, the housing market. One of the things about the, the Wilbur Ross example that we talked about, uh, what he's uh, done is, uh, it is said, uh, is taking the money that he made in profits on uh, the Bank of Ireland stake to be sold and kept them in Ireland and decided to go out and buy a lot of commercial property. And again, it's something that's attracted a lot of media attention because, of course, when the crisis happened and as the crisis evolved, a lot of these international buyers, firms you've never heard of, like Kennedy Wilson, started showing up on these shores and sort of seemed to be seemingly buying everything. Uh, Blackstone did the same. A number of other firms uh, showed up. And I know that if you were to sit down with those people today and ask them, there's no doubt but that they would say, 
well, you know, the low-hanging fruit's kind of gone in terms of the commercial property sector in Ireland. Uh, we've made very nice returns. And sure, we're happy to hold, but there's not exactly the same pressure from their perspective to start getting invested in this domestic market again. But I think it's very important to understand the context of why they're here. You know, they're here and their spreadsheet's looking for a 25% rate of return. Um, they're not here to generate a rental yield of property, which ultimately uh, is what core property investing should be all about. And uh, Brian, we might go over to you just to walk people through. Brian did a study of um, the UK property market and the commercial property market after they had uh, a significant fall in the early part of the 90s. And some of the examples we're going to talk about mirrors what we expect to happen with the Irish commercial property market over the next numbers of years. So, uh, you know, to Robbie's point, I think, you know, if there's one uh, lesson we can take from this crisis, we need a better understanding of property as an asset and as an asset class. It's not about the headlines in the papers of prices rising 20, 30, 40 percent, as Paul alluded to. It's actually about the income and the yield, rental yield you can get from that property. Now, you know, the nearest reference point we have to help understand how our recovery will unfold is uh, what has happened in our nearest neighbour in the UK in the early 90s and um, what's been happening there for the last five years. I mean, obviously, there's going to be differences, but we do tend to behave uh, very similar as an economy. And really, when we look at uh, commercial property recoveries, we see three stages. And I'm just going to uh, compare and contrast what's happening in Ireland with different UK recoveries on this chart. The first stage is you get a very rapid increase in prices. So you get uh, an oversold property market, you get yields of 9-10%, you get professional investors like Kennedy Wilson, uh, Blackstone, looking at spreadsheets going 9-10%, that's phenomenal, I'm going to move in. So you get a wall of money coming into the market. In Ireland now it's been joined by the REITs and also you know, companies like iPod. So our capital prices are up about 10% since the third quarter last year. We're only three quarters into gains. If we have a look at what happened in the UK, their recovery began in 2009. So that's a line coming through here in the chart. Again, you see the first stage of the recovery over years, one, two, three, 15, 20% gain in, in prices, a lot of speculation that were overheated. Then we go through a period in years three, four, five, where actually those prices come off. That can be in response to simply a lot of the fast money that's come in, moving now to Spain, Portugal, looking for those higher yields. It could also be a function of higher interest rates is what happened in the early 1990s. But if we go back to that recovery in the UK in the early 90s, again, you see a very similar pattern. The first couple of years, rapid rise in prices, then you see a tail off. And then over the rest of the cycle, you typically see property prices rise only in line with inflation. So two, three percent gains over what is, it tends to be a 10 year cycle. Important point about this, that even over those 10 years, you only should expect about you know, 30, 35 percent, maybe even 40 percent property price increase. In the Irish context, our property prices fell 60 percent. If they increase by 40, we're still 40 percent below the peak levels, albeit unsustainable peak levels. There's a bigger lesson in this for investors. That's what the media will focus on. When we have a look at the level of returns from income versus prices, um, they are in, uh, prices are simply dwarfed. So again, these lines of the chart we just looked at, we'll have a look at rental income in Ireland. First of all, our rents have been rising since 2012. They're up about 27%. Again, you know, much higher returns than that what we're getting on prices. If we have a look at what's happened in the UK, we're probably ahead of theirs. Five years in, their rents are up 40%. But importantly, over the course of the cycle, if you're compounding that 5-6% rental income return, that's the type of returns you should be expecting. So, you know, 5-6-7% compounded over a 10-year cycle um, will dwarf any returns you should be expecting from property prices at a ratio uh, of about three to one. So I think that's very important when we're investing in property. It's not about chasing prices higher. It's about finding good quality property with good quality tenants where you, no such thing as a guarantee, but you're pretty confident you're going to be able to compound that income over the cycle.